Well, like I said, if I haven't given you enough reason to help out and help create this very, very unusual new homestead, I have that one donor that saw me do a little thing, a little tiny piece of something called the Soupy Shuffle. And he sent me money. I said, oh, I do that dance, I get money. I said, okay. So, and he said, I'd sure love to see the Soupy Shuffle again. So I'm gonna do the Soupy Shuffle again. But you know, you always need background or provenance, backstory or provenance with something. So let me give you the backstory between me and Soupy Sales. Now, if you grew up in Detroit and I say lunch with Soupy, oh man, if you're between 60 and 70, I remember lunch with Soupy. We used to rush home from school at lunchtime because in those days they let you go home for lunch. We go home for lunch, we sit down, we have a grilled cheese sandwich and Campbell's tomato soup, turn on lunch with Soupy and there's Pookie and, and, and Black Tooth and White Fang. It just the whole gang was there and it was fun and it was a nice thing to do. Well, eventually Soupy went on to New York and, and then he had that infamous thing where he uh, had one minute of spare time and he said, it was after New Year's, he says, okay kids, I want you to go in the wall, in, in, in your parents' wallet and get all those little green pieces of paper with pictures of bearded old men in there and send them to me, care of this station, and he gave the address. He said, if you do that for me, I will send you a postcard from Puerto Rico. Well, of course, he got fired for that, but can you imagine the next day when, it, when Daddy goes into his wallet and he finds all his nice Washington uh, $1 bills with clean-shaven George Washington there in his wallet. The Alexander Hamiltons there in his wallet. But the Abraham Lincolns and the U.S. Grants, they weren't in the wallet. So he said he got $80,000 for that. So Soupy was a hell of a guy. And in Detroit, when we were growing up, I mean, he was a man. And when you're six, seven, eight years old, like I was, I think I was, gosh, I, I, I think I was uh, 12 or so, 13, when he headed for New York. But when you're growing up like that, I mean, this man was like God to us. So my sisters had a girlfriend that lived in, we lived in Gross Point Farm. She lived in Gross Point City, a little bit more high dollar than we. And I'm going to kill you. I'm telling a story here. Go away. Oh, ah, throw a rock at her. There we go. So, my sisters had a girlfriend. Her name was Bonnie Burns. And Bonnie, that, that's Bonnie Burns. And Bonnie had a brother that was my age. And his name was like Kip or Kippy or Kipper. It was something a little strange like that. I'm sure if my sister sees this, which she won't because she hates me now. But if she does, she'll correct me because she loves to correct me. And I'd love to remember what Kip's name was or Kipper. We're going to call him Kipper. But anyway, he was my age. And one day we went over to see him, and I had a brand new bicycle, and he said, I'm going to ride your bike, and he didn't ask me, he just jumps on my bike, he's, I said, where are you going? Well, he knew I liked Soupy Sales, so he said, we're going to go to Soupy Sales house. Well, Soupy did live in Gross Point City, about two blocks away from Kip's house. So, I mean, we're like six, seven years old. Goes over to Kip's house, he says, I'll get him outside for you. No, so he throws my bike down in the middle of the street, and Kip goes out in the middle of the street, and he lays down like this. And he just lays there in the middle, he's right in front of Soupy Sales house. Well, a car came by, the woman got out, she thought somebody was dead, because after all, it was like 1958 or something like that. And oh, she's all upset, and he gets up, gets mad then, you know, because they could still scold us in those days without having some, some uh, somebody get to get arrested. Scolded him, told him to get on his bike and leave. Well, he went to go out. This must have attracted Soupy's attention. So as soon as the woman drives away, old Kippy, he comes right back by. Now I'm standing on the corner minding my own business because I'm going to see my God. I'm going to see, I'm going to see some new sales. So Kippy comes back, throws the bike down, lays down on the ground. He no sooner gets on the ground. Out comes Soupy Sales. He said words I didn't even know what they were for another five or six years. He chases Kip. Of course, Kippy runs like hell. He gets on my bike, runs like hell. Here I am. Soupy Sales is standing. Why are you looking at it? I go, Soupy Sales, get out of here. I'm going to call your mother. Well, he did. And Kippy got the crap beat out of him for, for irritating Soupy Sales because apparently this wasn't his first rodeo with Soupy Sales. So anyway, I got to meet Soupy Sales that way. And he went back about, I don't know, I was a little kid. It might have been a month later. It might have been six or eight months later. But anyway, we went back. Kippy goes to do the same thing. 
And he's laying out there for what seemed to me like three hours. It was probably only a minute and a half. One of the neighbors comes out and says, what are you doing? He's I'm trying to get Soupy Sales to come out. He's, he sold the house. He moved away a long time ago. Well, he still was in Detroit. But he had this dance he did, in case you don't know who Soupy was after all. He had this dance he did called the Soupy Shuffle. And Soupy would do the Soupy Shuffle, and he'd go out in front of WXYZ TV and, when it was still in downtown Detroit, before it moved to Southfield, and he'd get people on the street corner, and he'd, do you do the Soupy Shuffle, I give you a dollar. Well, a dollar in 1957, that was like $500 today. These people are out there, they're doing the Soupy Shuffle. It just stuck with me, and I have done the Soupy Shuffle, and I'm not kidding you. I've done it in Tokyo, I've done it in Hiroshima, I've done it in Malacca, Malaysia. I've done it in airports. I have done it all over the world. I love it, and I'm 63 years old this year. This shirt's three years old. And I'm still doing the Soupy Shuffle. As a matter of fact, let's see if I've got my, my stage hand ready. Cue the Soupy Shuffle! Cue the Soupy Shuffle! Shuffle! Good help. It's hard to get these days. I mean, Soupy had trouble too with it. But anyway, let's 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 see if I can remember how to do it just right. This is for you, Bill. This is for you, Bill. This is for you, Bill. me. Oh, oh, am I out of breath? I'll tell you what, that ought to be good for a dollar or two. Come on, reach in there and get some of them green pieces of paper with pictures of bearded or unbearded men or some of those little plastic cards with that have cards that have no, no, no numbers on them. De Debbie, what are we doing here? We're not trying to recreate the whole Soupy Sales set. I mean, for crying out loud, jeez, get rid of that stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Usually it would take like about three seconds after that when we would have like one more. Ah! 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 Oh! Oh! Cream pie, my favorite. Oh! Ah! Now look, that ought to be good for something. That ought to be good for something. Now come on. Oh my God, oh, that burns. Oh, I got to get out of here.